Hebrews chapter number 4. We begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant is fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bond with. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thine house? In the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon me and upon thy sons, and shall pour out in all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, and shut the door upon her, and upon her sons. She brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her sons, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. And she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live, thou and thy children, of the rest. Let's pray. Dear me, Father. Thank you, Lord, so much for your word. Thank you for the man. The sermons we've already heard, Lord. Uh, there's just nothing we can say, Lord. Your spirit is so good. And Amen. I ask that you just help me as I try to convey these thoughts. Your question in my prayer. Amen. Amen. I was recently reading the story, very well-known story. Um, we've, we've all heard it, I'm sure. We've all Amen. Preached. But I was recently reading the story in my Bible, and uh, the Holy Spirit Amen. just kind of gave it to me, uh, showed me something in it that I'd never seen before, and I, I never really heard anybody preach it this way. Uh, you might have, I don't know. You might have heard it from the person I stole it from. But I'm, just <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I was reading this, and I was thinking to myself, man, that's good. You know, this stuff. You know, sometimes you're reading the Bible, and God just gives yes. you a thought, and you see something in a, in a different way, and I, I wanted to share that with you. I think it might help you. Um, the story, for those of you who aren't familiar, we just read it. This widow, her husband had died, and uh, for whatever reason, her husband was in a lot of debt, and she was left without uh, a home uh, or somebody to provide for her home there. And the creditors came; they wanted to take her sons, and she goes to the man of God. She goes to the Amen. Yeah. Amen. And he asked her, "Hey, what, what do you what do you have? Yeah. What do you have in the home? You know, what what can we work with?" And she says, "Well, I don't have much, yeah. uh, but I have this just a little bit of oil." Yeah. And he said, okay, this is what I want you to do. And he didn't tell her what he was going to do. He said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go out. I want you to look for vessels. Yeah. He said, go, go to the neighbors. Yeah. Go, go down the street. Go other cities. Go anywhere you can go. Find as many vessels as you can find and bring them to your house. Yeah. Yeah. So she goes out. Her and her two sons, they borrow as many vessels as they can. They bring them in. You know, he says, all right, take the little crucible and start pouring. And just keep pouring until you're, till you're done. And she pour, started pouring. Her son brought her another vessel. She started pouring. And her yeah. son brought her another vessel. She kept pouring. She kept pouring. She kept pouring. And she gets to the last one. She pours and says, bring me another vessel. And she said, her son says, uh, yeah. no more vessels. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. And they, she says, oh. all right. So they go to the man of God. The man of God says, sell it. They bought it. Yeah. Come on. Come on. And, and, and uh, as I was reading this, and I was thinking to myself, you know, she did not, she didn't, here's point number one, she did not have much to begin with. Yeah, exactly. The Bible says in, uh, in chapter 4, verse 2, there it says, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. You know, the amazing thing is what God can do with little. Yeah. Uh, Amen. We're, we're not much here at yeah. 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 That's right. Uh, myself, and as I look around, I'm not very impressed either. Yeah, come on. We're not much, but yeah. God can do a lot yeah. of little. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter one twenty six. These are some of my favorite verses. The Bible says, "For ye see your calling, brethren, yeah. how that not many wise men after the flesh, not yeah. many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the yeah. foolish things of this world Praise to God. confound the wise, yeah. and God hath chosen the weak things of the world yeah. to confound the things that are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised hath God chosen yea, and things which are not to bring to not things." Amen. Are not. You know, I, I think of the story of uh, of uh, when when God. God fed the 5,000 there, and when Andrew brought to, yeah. to Jesus the lad there, and he said, uh, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, and he says, but what are these amongst yeah. the many? Come on. That's right. You know, and, and you, you got to think yourself, as a human being, he sees this boy, and he sees this little lunch, and he sees this huge crowd, and he says, God, how, what are we going to do with this? Yeah. He said, uh, if you look at what we've got, and you look at what we've got to do, he yeah. says, what is this amongst yeah, the many? Come on. Yeah, come God, on. Say, hey, hey, I can hey. do anything. Yeah. Good. The Bible says uh, in John 6, 9, uh, oh, I'm sorry, let's see, uh, Matthew 19, 26, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God That's right. all things are possible. Amen. Preach it. We might not have much. You say, you know, I don't have any talent. I, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not, I don't 
don't have any charisma. I don't, I don't know how to deal with people or talk to people. But God can use you. Yeah. Amen. I just got. All I got is this little bit of oil. Yeah. Praise God. That, and and Elisha said, "All right, we can work yeah. with that. Because yeah. we can't work God. with that, but God. Can yes, sir. Us. Amen. Glory to God. I want, I want you to see point number two. She needed to bring vessels. Yep. Look at chapter three. Oh, I'm sorry, verse three. It says, "Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels.' And I love this statement. He said, "Borrow not." Of fear. Yeah. Amen. Now go with me real quick to Second Timothy chapter number two. Second yeah. Timothy chapter number two, and look at verse number twenty. The Bible says, "But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor." And it says, "If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor." sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Now, the, the passage here that we're dealing with is talking about holiness and we preach those sermons and, and, and you guys know that, you know, you know you're not supposed to be in sin. But we, we get from that that the vessel represents a man. You see that? Yep. yep. When, when God is talking about a vessel here, yep. it represents a person. Come on. And when Elisha, who in this story I believe represents God, went to the, the widow there and he said, bring vessels. He was yep. telling her, hey, go bring vessels. Go bring men. Go yep. bring people and bring them to your house. And yep. here, hey, I'm here to tell you something. Fellowship Baptist Church, yep. your job is to go get vessels. Yep. Hey, your man. job is to go get vessels. She brought a vessel, it filled. She brought a vessel, 
it filled. Yeah. She brought a vessel, it filled. As soon as she started bringing vessels, no more oil. Yeah, come on, there you go. God can't save people unless we bring them. Yeah. God can't do anything unless, I mean, God does the saving, but God needs a vessel. Yeah, God on. needs a woman. God needs a man. God needs a bus brother. Yeah, yeah. come on. Come on. Yes, and sir. And if there's no one to fill, then God says, I can't fill them. That's right. It's good. I need a vessel. That's right. <coughs> Look, and here's the thing. If she would have brought another vessel, <coughs> He would fill it. Come yeah, on. that's right. If he would have brought a hundred more, she would have filled it. If I was the widow, I would have thought to myself, you know, as soon as that last one came and she's like, bring me another one, the kids say, oh, we're done. I would have thought to myself, man, we should have brought more vessels. Yeah, come on. Yes, yeah. You know, and, and on Sunday morning, we get four people saved. And Saturday, we get uh, four people saved. Yeah. Uh, just today, my wife and I went soul winning. We had two people saved. Yeah. And, and you, know, you go home and you think to yourself, man, God filled that vessel. I wish I had more vessels. Yeah. Yes, amen. But it's your job to bring them. Yep. God can only fill what we bring. God can only fill what we bring to Him. Yeah, it's good. That's right. But we can't fill it. God fills it. That's right. But here, here's the point that bless my soul. Amen. And here's, here's the last point. The Bible says, well, she got rewarded based on how hard she worked to bring vessels, not on the fact that they got filled. Good. Look at, look at verse number 5. It says, I, verse 7. So then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou, and thy children of the rest. Now here's the thing. Did she provide the oil? No. What, was it her who somehow made the oil fill all those vessels? No. no, sir. All she did was bring the vessels. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse number five, the Bible says, Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? Yeah. But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. Now, just real quick, this isn't in my notes, but it just popped out to me, and I, 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 I gotta say it. Look at that verse, it says, Even as the Lord gave to every man. I don't know if you've ever thought about that phrase, but he said, Who's Paul? Who's the Apostle? They're yeah. nobody, they're just vessels. Yeah. But he said, Even as the Lord gave to every man. Do you know that God has set aside a soul winner for every single person in this world? I believe that. That's what the Bible says. He says, who's Paul? Who's Apollos? And he said, they're just servants. They're just soul winners Amen. that God gave every man. Amen. See, God has set aside someone that you need to reach. Amen. God, has said, God said, hey, hey, uh, Charlie, there's somebody I need you to reach. Yeah. I gave you to somebody to reach. Yeah. And if you don't reach them, no one else will. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's people you know that I'll never know. There's people Pastor Mark knows that I'll, I'll never meet them. Yeah. There's people you, you got family members who will never know. Well, I know people you'll never know. And God has given you to somebody. Amen. Amen. You don't go and they, you know, what happens? They die and go to hell. Yep. Come on. But look at this, he says, who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave you yeah. hey, man. God filled the vessel. Yeah. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward to his own labor. Amen. For we are laborers together with God, and yes. we are God's husband. Yep. We are God's building. Yes. You know what I'm looking forward to? One day when I get to heaven, we're going to have the judgment seat of Christ. And God is going to look at me, and He's not going to say, Man, you were a good age mechanic for the Air Force. <laughs> he's not going to say, Man, you were, you, you were a good athlete. Man, you, were, you knew everything about the stocks. Or, Man, you knew yep. everything. He's going to look at me and say, Hey, how many vessels you bring? Yep. Come How many vessels got filled? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending, see, the widow got paid depending on how many vessels she brought. Yep. And depending on how many bus games you bring. Yes. How many people you got saved. Come on. People you preach to got saved. That's a reward. Yeah. yeah. That's Amen. Reward. Come on. Oh, well, you know, the Bible doesn't tell us, I'm sure the widow brought a lot of vessels. But if she would have only brought five, then I thought she would have got paid. Yeah. If she would have brought a thousand, then that's how many she got paid. And obviously we do this because we love people, but God rewards you and God pays you in heaven. And even if you don't bring anybody, I mean, you're still getting heaven. But I want to get to heaven and get God's reward and God's favor. Yes. And it's going to come 
Not because I failed anybody. Yeah. Because I brought people to the guy who could. Yeah. Amen. Amen. She brought him to Elisha. I bring him to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's your job. Amen. That's Amen. right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, so much. Thank you for.